When it comes to psychological test, three criteria must be met. The test must be standardized, reliable, and valid. Standardized exams mean that we define uniform testing procedures and scores by comparison with the performance of a pretest group. So we need to give the test to a representative sample of people. Then we take the scores from this representative sample and use them for comparison with future test takers. Reliability means that you'll receive consistent results on a test. This can be assessed by the consistency of scores on two halves of the test, on alternative forms of the test, or retesting. While a test may be reliable, reliability doesn't mean that it's valid. Validity is the extent to which the test actually measures or predicts what it's aiming to measure or predict. Researchers study intelligence through cross-sectional designs and longitudinal designs. Remember that longitudinal designs involve comparing individuals to themselves across different points in time. We may study them at 20, 30, 40, and again at 50. Cross-sectional designs include looking at different people at the same point in time. So we may include a group of 20-year-olds and a group of 50-year-olds and compare them to each other. Cross-sectional designs are helpful for intelligence studies because we get to study different people and different eras. We can do things like comparing more affluent people to less affluent people, people raised in large families to smaller families, and various other factors. With longitudinal studies, we can see how aging affects intelligence. We've learned that intelligence remains stable although crystallized intelligence increases with age and fluid intelligence decreases. About 50 to 80% of our intelligence is heritable. This means that about 50 to 80% of the differences in intelligence differ from person to person because of genetics. Our environment also plays a role in our intelligence. Wealthier individuals tend to have higher IQ scores. In part, this may be due to poverty taking up valuable cognitive resources. When we're spending most of our time wondering how we'll make ends meet or how we'll afford groceries for the week, it's much harder for us to use our cognition to store new knowledge. Neglect can also lead to less intelligence. Our intelligence is not fully controlled by our genes and our environment. Believing that our intelligence is changeable allows us to have a growth mindset. Our brain is a muscle that can be strengthened. A growth mindset makes us more resilient when we're confronted with difficult learning material. And those with a growth mindset typically experience better grades. There are a few minor differences in intelligence when we compare men and women. Women tend to be a bit better at spelling, verbal fluency, reading, and locating objects. Despite popular belief, there's hardly a difference in math performance between men and women. However, men do tend to outperform women on complex math problems. They're also better at spatial tasks, like the one on this slide. When it comes to race and ethnicity, racial and ethnic groups differ in their average intelligence test scores. Those who score high are more likely to attain high levels of education and income. However, any differences in intelligence related to race and ethnicity are likely due to environmental influences, not biological influences. For example, the schools that we attend influence our intelligence. Countries whose economies create a large wealth gap between rich and poor tend to also have a large rich versus poor intelligence test score gap. Other influences may also be at play. Intelligence tests are notoriously biased. For example, a test is biased if its scores will be influenced by the test taker's cultural experiences. IQ tests often measure test takers' developed abilities, which reflect their education and experiences. A test that we give to someone who grew up in Iceland may not be appropriate for someone who grew up in Argentina.